very welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, it's feeling cold outside, it really is. But is it all in your head or is there actual science behind Baby, feeling cold? It's cold outside. <laughs> we are busting the myths around coldness this morning and no better man to do it. Separating fact from fiction, it's Phil of Science. Phil Smith, good morning, Phil. Good morning, how are you? Morning. It's great to have you with Thank us. You very much. I love this. This is great because there's some real question marks and you know, old wives' totally. tales deliver around coldness. So yes. can you talk to us about... Well, I suppose, will we go straight into yeah, the first one? Yeah, I love okay, the first one. OK, can you get a kidney infection for sitting on a cold surface? No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> who even <laughs> thinks why, why did you think you yeah. could? So I think this is part of the thing. So you can't get a kidney infection because you can't like just create bacteria. It has to come from somewhere like that. So uh, usually bacterial infections either come from a UTI, a urinary tract infection, yeah. or you, you get that. This What happens when you sit on, when your hoop touches a cold surface and everything gets on it, there's this thing called vasoconstriction, which your vascular system, your circulatory system, your, your blood vessels kind of close up to oh, yeah. protecting yourself. So you can feel pain from that kind of stuff by sitting on a cold surface for a longer period of time. So that's why you think that if you might oh. feel it's exacerbating what's happening on there, but you can't get infection coming in from a cold surface. Okay. But it sort of leads Busted. on to another thing as well about where you I always feel that if it's really cold, my back yes. sort of freezes up and I get yeah. tense. Is that true? Is that, that that's a real thing. Right. So you can get muscular pain and difficulty from that again, that va your your va your vascular system closing up. So there's vascular the constriction which is coming and then the, when you open up again that, that lets the blood go again when it gets warmer again so mm -hmm. you're, you're looking at these kind of stiffness that comes into your body it's it's how your body is responding physiologically to the cold and it, it has a mechanical system to we close just it. Sort it of tenses up. Tense, you we... tense up but also it's that blood flow isn't happening as much and your body your core wants to keep warmer okay right. another okay. one is it good for you to sleep in a cold room Yes, to to a certain extent. Not like, freezing cold. Not, room. not freezing cold room. Actually, my my uh, I suppose my parents in law they um they have their window open all the time. So oh, the yeah. ideal thing that is that is a cold room but a warm bed. So if you heap heat into your room, it's not going to help you sleep. Your body needs coldness to start relaxing, shutting down, getting into that kind of warmer space. Right. So a colder room, but a warm bed is the exact kind of way that you need to, 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 to get a better kind of sleep. So if you go in and everything's really warm, it's also really kind of humidity in the, in the room, will, it will help as well, depending if it's at the right kind of 40, 50% as well. But so coldness so is a cool better. room and a nice warm Open bed. The warm bed. Open a window. And also that extra oxygen into the room as well is always good for no you too. Harm. Okay, cool. Um, do rate now. What is for starts? What's chilled veins? What is okay. a chilled vein? So yeah, chilled veins are that I had to check this out because I always when I was a kid, my mother would be like, "Don't be sitting on the rod, you'll you get, get chilled chill veins." Oh, I was like, ah, like yeah. "What are chilled veins?" Not knowing what what they were at yeah. all. So chilled veins again are this with you have this vasoconstriction when your vascular system closes up, so you get that, and then you sit down with heat if they if the it opens up again. Chilled lanes are when you have that system, it's closed up, you go onto something hot and they open up rapidly and quickly and you get this rush of fluid coming through and that's what can cause pain, it can cause rupture and cause swelling and rashness and everything else and it can last for a few days as well. So Did sitting on a radiator... My can, wife yes. gives out about chilled lanes all the time, really? on her toes and yeah. fingers or whatever else. Is it not just bad circulation? Not necessarily. That it, it doesn't go to the extremities? To do, it's to do with circulation and it's but it's this rapid increase in heat that causes it more well, so than... What's she saying? What's wrong with her? It's just... just well, like like Lucy's fingers are purple all the time. And is she constantly time. going to try no, to heat them up? No, she just generally... like. She has it's them. bad circulation, oh, I thought, and like, but it's exactly. It's probably she's warm in her body. Like the blood is kind of going to yeah to extremities. And yeah, okay. Well, but this is. But, but we were going to go on to this as well. Well, the myth is about this and about radiators. So, so sitting on radiators can like, do it now, and they're different to piles, which are hemorrhoids or different things. But sometimes people <laughs> c confuse the two because they're the same similar. So you area. can't get piles by sitting on a radiator. No, that's a squeezy <laughs> kind of pain, which are bursting. And you can't get chill blains either. No, you, you chill you blains can. You can. Yeah, chill okay. radiators will contribute to. Okay, yeah, right, so your mum was right. Yeah. D don't sound so surprised. Oh, really yeah, a um, right, so <laughs> Alan was talking about the stiff back and sore yeah, back. Yeah, that's definitely right. that's so yeah. true. Right. Um, well, do, what, can we try the yeah, experiment? Do you do an experiment? Okay, okay, so this is a very kind of simple kind of experiment. You've got, in this one, we've got some warm water. In this, we've got some ice water. If you put your hands, so actually, put your hands on your Alan's face first. Alan's putting his face into this one. No, I'm no, not. No, no, no. Put, put your hands on your face. face. Same kind of temperature. Yeah, Looks like you're shocked. cold. Yeah. So if you put one hand in that and one hand in this, Immerse the minute, yeah. Now, no, get, get in. Obviously, obviously, yeah. then that's oh. going to be different on your face than yeah, when you so put it back. 
So the idea, what's happening in here then is what's happening in here. <laughs> I'm going to just talk for a long time to this effects with Tom. So in here, Tommy's hands are constricting uh, the, va the vascular system, the circular. They're closing in up this, oh in, the cold, in the cold one. But this not is, in this Not one. in this. Now, if you take your hands out in a second and put them on your face, I want you to tell me what you feel on your face. Does your face feel different okay. with each hand? So put them on and then does one side feel hotter than the other? Yes. Okay, which I'll, side? Which side? The hot side. Yeah, grand. Exactly. So, and then if you touch this hot water bottle, which feels... Do you, it, even well, they though both a, kind of feel the same there, do they? So they've got an extreme of more hit, so they're warming back up again with a yeah. higher temperature. But you're feeling, even though it's the same face and the same, you're oh, actually feeling, you're different. feeling different temperatures because but that your body... makes sense. You're, you're, yeah. you're taking it out of cold. So Try you're it there. So, no, it's grand. We know what's happened. So it's not just your hands, no. but your face is feeling the hands cold, but it's what you actually sense in your hands as a temperature difference. But so what does that just not make us? sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's it not just the cold from the water in this. It's actually what you feel in terms of your... So if you're putting your hands on the counter here as well, because you're getting less blood and you have this vasoconstriction in your hands as well, you're you're not as sensitive to feeling touch or temperature as well. So you're actually okay. getting responses differently do, in your hands. Do women feel cold more than men? Yes, absolutely. Physiologically. Why? So it's to do so they physiologically want to keep their keep their their um their core warmer. Um, they have uh, different men tend to have more muscle mass. Women have more fat in their bodies as well. Muscle will generate heat even when it's not necessarily moving. Uh, estrogen can affect it as well as well. So uh, from uh, women's hands and feet and ex extremities will cool down quicker than men's. So it was. Have you not felt Mirren O'Connell's hands? We they are uh, always not just cold. cold black. We they are had all always feel oh, Mirren O'Connell's hands. And all we say is like, can we get the heating on? And but all had, the men I'm surrounded by are like, it's. Boring. Remember we had the female astronaut not on the yeah. show and she was one of the first uh, females into space but the International Space Station is set at a temperature yeah. that men find, men find fine yeah. and she was frozen all the time. True and it's, it's not one of the many things that are set at men's temperatures or men's could do that. So it's not it. just women complaining? No it's oh. not. <laughs> it is nothing to do with trauma. It's, it's almost like we've been conditioned <laughs> to feel like we're Phil, all another wall. one. Does yes. coldness affect your mood or decision making? Yes it does. It, if it, you're it, freezing yeah. your mood will be different. So again you're by your body prioritizes survival in instance. So it will keep your your uh, your wants to keep your your co your core warmer. So touch, feel, motor control, and that will 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 change. But also your decision making will be more akin to survival as well. So you will actually make different decisions. Your so risk profile will be different as well when you're colder. So, when, so you shouldn't be, what kind of things should you not be doing if you're You really shouldn't be cold. operating heavy machinery. If you're really cold. <laughs> you're cold. Really, really. It actually is a treatment. So you actually will make different decisions. So your profile of what you see as risk, how you actually control your body will be a little bit different as well. It's not a massive scale. As in, like, you'd be totally, like, if you're cold, you'll do yeah. something yeah. totally stupid, but it will make you stupider. Except Santa. He's magic and he's outside. Oh, it makes well, all the great decisions cold. cold. He's, he's cold. got the lovely big jacket. He's got the he does, indeed. Hat on. But fascinating. So, um, there you go. So, Phil Smith. Thank you. Uh, if people we want to find out more, Phil, of science, of science on Instagram. Brilliant to have online. you in.